Japanese swords, symbolizing the Bushido spirit, have numerous renowned blades in their history. Even today, many famous swords still exist. But after Japan's defeat in World War II, millions of swords were seized by the GHQ and went missing. Among them was the Honjo Masamune, a legendary sword passed down through the Shogun family for centuries. Known as a phantom sword, many people still seek its whereabouts. In this episode, we will explore the history of this sword, from its appearance in Japanese history to its disappearance during World War II. The Honjo Masamune was crafted by the swordsmith Masamune, who flourished in the 13th to 14th centuries. He is a legendary figure, considered one of the three great swordsmiths, Tenga Sansaku, in history. This period was the golden age of Japanese swords, marked by the emergence of numerous master craftsmen. Born in 1264, Masamune entered apprenticeship at the age of 17 under the renowned swordsmith Shinto Kunimitsu, where he mastered the secrets of sword making. He then traveled across famous sword producing regions in Japan, studying various techniques. Ultimately, he perfected the Soshu Den style of swordsmithing. Swords of this style are characterized by their thin yet exceptionally strong blades, representing a revolutionary forging technique that transformed the standards of sword making. Masamune's achievement was closely tied to the historical context of his era. His career as a swordsmith coincided with the Mongol invasions of Japan. Genko. Two attempts by the Mongol Empire to invade Japan in 1274 and 1281. These invasions significantly advanced the evolution of Japanese swords. Additionally, Japan experienced an unprecedented rise in national defense awareness, which, coupled with a burgeoning respect for martial skills, led to a significant increase in the demand for Japanese swords. In this era, samurai sought swords that were both splendid and practical. Amidst these trends, he completed the Soshu Den style. His method involved combining hard and soft steel to enhance the sword's strength, and he emphasized beauty with large, powerful, and wave-like blade patterns. This style resonated with the samurai of the time, and he quickly became a famous swordsmith. Subsequently, his style influenced swordsmith throughout Japan, leading to the emergence of the Masamune Jitetsu, or the Ten Disciples of Masamune. These were ten smiths deeply influenced by Masamune's techniques. They expanded these new sword-making techniques across Japan. Many of the swords forged by Masamune were considered priceless by the powerful samurai who owned them. His swords became synonymous with the epitome of flawless craftsmanship. The famed sword, Honjo Masamune, came into prominence during the Battle of Jugori Gahara in 1588. This battle occurred near a castle in Yamagata Prefecture between the warlord Honjo Shigenaga and the brothers Tozenji Yoshinaga and Katsumatsa. The Honjo forces, vastly superior, swiftly decimated the Tozenji side, including Yoshinaga. The surviving brother, Katsumasa, launched a solo assault on the Honjo main camp and struck at Honjo. His sword hit Honjo's helmet, splitting its clasp in two. However, he was quickly subdued and killed. The sword he wielded was none other than what would later be known as the Honjo Masamune. Everyone present was astonished by its sharpness, and Honjo took the sword as a trophy, making it his personal favorite. Although it should have been named after its original owner, Katsumasa, 
history often favors the victors, and thus the sword was named Honjo Masumune. Subsequently, this sword was presented to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who had achieved the unification of Japan. Hideyoshi was also known as a collector of famous swords, and many of the era's finest blades were gathered under the possession of Japan's most powerful ruler. For him, swords symbolized authority, and he amassed renowned swords from all over Japan. He also gave these collected swords as rewards to his vassals, which led to the recognition of Japanese swords as a status symbol among samurais and shoguns. After Hideyoshi's death, the sword was presented to the next shogun, Tokugawa Ieyasu. The Tokugawa family then established the Edo shogunate in 1603, ruling as shoguns for 260 years. During this time, the sword was passed down through generations of the Tokugawa shogunate, serving as a symbol of the shogun's authority. Each new shogun was entrusted with the sword by his predecessor. Given that the sword was treasured in the shogun's house, where the finest swords from all over Japan were collected and used as a symbol of succession, it could be argued that this sword was perhaps the most esteemed sword in Japan at that time. In 1867, the Edo shogunate came to an end. Subsequently, this sword was passed to the head of the Tokugawa family, who inherited it from the last shogun, and it continued to be passed down through generations of the Tokugawa family. In 1939, World War II broke out. After Japan's defeat, the country accepted the Potsdam Declaration in 1945, which placed Japan under the occupation of the GHQ. General Headquarters of the Allied Forces. As part of their efforts to demilitarize the Japanese populace, the GHQ decided to confiscate all weapons within Japan. This included not only firearms, but also swords. Traditionally, swords held more of a symbolic and spiritual role than a practical one as weapons for the Japanese. In response to the GHQ's sword hunt, the Japanese government argued that swords are not weapons. However, given that swords were deeply embedded in Japanese culture, and considering that Japanese soldiers wielded military swords until the end of the Pacific War, the GHQ viewed them as symbols of militarism and weapons, leading to a thorough search and confiscation. Despite the Japanese government's persistent efforts, the GHQ only permitted the preservation of swords that were considered works of art. However, the determination of a sword's artistic value was left to the GHQ, resulting in the seizure of many famous swords. The swords confiscated by the GHQ were disposed of in various ways. Some Were taken as war trophies by the American occupation forces. Others were burned with gasoline, chopped up, or even melted down to be recast for uses like locomotive wheels. However, it is widely believed that the majority were dumped into the sea. Before the war, it is estimated that there were 15 million households in Japan possessing swords. Yet, approximately 3 million swords were lost due to the GHQ sword hunt. During this time, the Honjo Masamune, a symbol of the shogunate passed down through generations, was also seized. The Tokugawa family sword collection is believed to have fallen into the hands of a sergeant from the 7th Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army. The whereabouts of these swords, including the Honjo Masamune, have since become unknown. The name of the sergeant who took the swords was recorded in katakana as Kori Dibaimo, which was later translated as Kodi Baimo, an unusual name. 
Regardless, no convincing evidence regarding the current location of the sword has been found to date, and the search continues. Currently, no one has seen the actual form of this sword. However, it is listed in the Kyoho Meibutsucho, a catalog of famous swords created under the instruction of the Tokugawa shogunate during the Edo period. The sword is said to have had a shallow curve with a blade length of about 25.7 inches and featured the powerful blade pattern characteristic of Masumune's work. Interestingly, several swords crafted by him still exist, with nine of them designated as national treasures. The legacy of Masamune as a swordsmith has continued for centuries. A 24th century generation descendant, Yamamura Tsunehiro, runs a blade making workshop known for producing not only knives and scissors, but also Japanese swords as a swordsmith. Additionally, there are also places where one can feel the history of this sword. In a museum in Niigata Prefecture, the helmet worn by Honjo Shigenaga is displayed, showing the sword mark on its forehead, a testament to the battle in which this sword was used. Japanese traditional knives are recognized as first class by professional chefs worldwide for their sharpness, akin to that of Japanese swords. This is partly due to the history of swordsmiths. For over a thousand years, swordsmiths have been creating numerous swords for battles, playing a vital role. However, with the arrival of peaceful times in the 18th century, the demand for swords declined. Many master craftsmen then shifted from sword making to knife making, passing on their swordsmithing techniques to knife crafting. This is why Japanese knives possess such exceptional sharpness. I want everyone to experience the excellent sharpness and the beauty of the blades of Japanese knives. At Hocho Knife, you can purchase knives online made by Japanese knife artisans. They offer a wide variety of knives, so please find and purchase your unique knife. For the product page, please check the description of this video. We hope you enjoyed this exploration into the world of Japanese swords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content about the history of Japanese swords. Until next time, sayonara.